Hi, I'm Cameron, and I don't just read comics. I love them. Welcome back to another episode of Cameron Reads Comics. Today, I am going to be reviewing She-Hulk number one by Rainbow Rowell and Raj, Raj Antonio. Okay, so I need to start this video and let you guys know first and foremost that I love She-Hulk. And it's not a character that I've read like a ton of work from. I'm currently reading the Dan Slot run. I read some of the Mariko Tamaki run, and I read all of the Charles Soule run. So there's a lot of holes that I need to build in my collection. Uh, I have, I have a first appearance. I have um, my favorite cover of her is uh, Sensational She Hulk number one, the John Byrne cover, which I also have. Um, but you know, when I saw that they're coming out with a brand new She Hulk series. Like a new number one, I was like, I should pick that up because I've been doing these issue number one reviews and, you know, I like, I just want to see what, where they're going to take her. So when it comes to this story, number one, I actually just want to mention that I freaking love the cover for number one. I think it's really beautiful. Um, but going into this story and like actual content wise. So this story took place after World War She-Hulk, which was an Avengers event by uh, Jason Aaron. I didn't read it, so I'm not currently reading the Avengers. And at this point, it's like 50 issues deep, and I don't know how bad I want to. I don't know how bad I want to hop in on on that. Um, but she was a mainstay part of the his Avengers team, and I was like, okay, well, maybe I can go pick. Maybe maybe I can pick this up without that context. And good news, you can. Pretty much all you need to know is that Jen is starting from scratch. She's picking up her life from the moments after that story, which. I don't know if she's an Avenger anymore, but um, within this series, uh, there's a couple of characters. It's her kind of like literally in this issue, just picking up the pieces. It's it's kind of a, one of those first issues where it starts off. Uh, it's it kicks off the series by picking up the pieces of what was given and like kind of giving her a new trajectory. I think that the best part of this issue is that is the tone that it set for Jen moving forward. Um, I really liked, uh, you know, we, we had appearances from two characters, number one being Titania, which is a classic She-Hulk villain. I really like her arcs in the uh, dance lot run. Uh, she's actually solicited to be in the series, and so I think this is also one of those, like, new number ones that is coming out because of the She-Hulk a TV series coming out. It's kind of like giving you some flavors that you can anticipate to see within that show. And so that being the case, we have Titania, who's also been slated to be played by Jamila Jamil. And um, their dynamic is really interesting, but I think like that's one of the things that draws me into She-Hulk is that her tone and her dynamic within the Marvel Universe isn't obviously that of a regular Hulk. Like I feel like the Hulk narrative, usually like Bruce Banner Hulk, goes to be more Frankenstein monster oriented. That's not Jen. Jen's, <laughs> I've never watched the show, but I feel like Jen's is more like sex in the city where she just like, you know, living her life doing, you know, stuff. So there's, there's a, there's a very interesting dynamic with Jen that we see in this, uh, I was going to say this show, but this issue that the tone is really familiar where she's like, Titania kind of comes up to Jennifer Walters, the human form of She-Hulk. And she's like, let's fight. And, Jen's kind of like, why do we need to fight? You know, it was, it was, the whole conversation was diffused and Titania has, you know, I guess had a life of crime and had gone back and there's a fight scene between them, but Jen's kind of like, I don't really want to fight you. Like, why do we have to do this? Also within that fight scene, a great full page splash of the She-Hulk transformation. I just loved it. Um, it felt, it, it <laughs> I like this because it's t it's reminding me of all the the series incarnations of She-Hulk because you know there's the John Byrne run and then there's like the Dan Slott era and those are kind of very two different takes on the same character, um, but both obviously true to the character and so I see that influence in these and I love that. And then it kind of like Jen's Jen's looking for a place to live and she she runs into not what runs into but she meets up with the Wasp Janet Van Dyne and Jan lets her stay at a, an apartment that she has in New York that Jen formerly used to live at. I'm not familiar with when that happens, but uh, she's picking up her pieces back from the very beginning, which is good. And so uh, I'm glad to have seen that. I'm glad, I'm glad, 
I think She-Hulk is a mainstay of the Marvel Universe, and I think that while her story can be on its own, she doesn't need Avengers to come and help her resolve her, like, you know, super villainous issues. But, like, for her to interact with other female Avengers, like she did with Jan in this title, I really enjoy. Because I think that's kind of something that is essential to the character. She exists in this universe, and she kind of takes... Jen's very much someone who like takes it all in, or at least she Hulk side of her does where it's like, I exist here. And like, these are my friends in my community. And like, I love my community. And I just think that it, it's best. Maybe for someone like Moon Knight, I don't know if you'd quite need the rest of the Marvel universe or even like Daredevil. I don't think you need the rest of the Marvel universe, like, you know, imposing on his narrative. I never feel that way about She-Hulk. And in fact, if that's the case, I want it, you know, I want it to happen. I want her to be interacting with, you know, Janet Van Dyne, or even like, like let's, I'd love to see an issue of what a, what a cup of coffee between her and Sue Storm would be like, because, you know, they've been teammates, they've worked together and like stuff like that. So I'm seeing that in this book and I'm really enjoying it. Um, now for the art, uh, Roge Antonio's art was amazing. There's almost like a Ramon Perez, a, a Pepe Larraz kind of, uh, tone to it you know Ramon Perez was on FF and also I think both those artists were on uh, X X X-Men House of X Powers of 10 so I really liked uh, that their pages it just had a good natural feel that's with She-Hulk you don't need to be too harsh in her lines or or her panels I think that like it needs to be bright it needs to be smooth and fun tonally and I think we saw that in this art and even this cover I love that cover and I actually love the She-Hulk logo that they went back to that's just my jam. I just love that kind of stuff. That's fun fact about my preference. So I thought the pages were very dynamic. I thought the color choice was really, really good within these. So um, I really enjoyed myself reading this. So now for the rating, as far as um, whether or not I'm going to pick up issue number two, I have a complicated answer. <laughs> um, number one, my poll, like there are factors in this. And I think there's always needs to be factors, but it makes me sad. <laughs> For this series, I think I've decided that I'm going to hold off on it for the monthly, um, but because I am a subscriber to Marvel Unlimited, I think I'm going to read it monthly on Marvel Unlimited when it gets released there. Um, I hope that that doesn't impose on sales. I, this is my first time interacting with this artist and this writer, uh, so I liked it, but I don't think I can uh, pick up the ongoing. If I do, it will be for the colors. Let me give a shout out to the cover artist really quick. Who is it? It's a... Uh, Jen, Jen Bartel, who I've, I've seen her name before, so my pull list is very full, and I don't know if I can invest in this, especially if it's an ongoing. There's some titles recently where I wasn't going to pick up the next couple issues. I'm talking about Tom Morelli's The Thing, but then I found out it's a six-issue miniseries, and I'm like, you know, I can pick up the six-issue miniseries. I don't know. To be determined if I pick up issue number two now, because I really did enjoy myself, and I thought it was very, I thought it was very digestible, but you know, all right. I'm Cameron. I don't just read comics. I love them. Make sure to comment and let me know what you thought about this issue number one or what you think about She-Hulk in general. Um, make sure to uh, follow or clobber those like and subscribe buttons as well as maybe check out my podcast, Cameron Reads Comics. I will see you guys next time.